Necton aimed to develop a standardised method or protocol for carrying out multidisciplinary work to understand the patterns of distribution of life in the deep sea and the environmental drivers to those patterns. If I go out and I'm having a look in the middle of the ocean and I see, in fact, in two locations I've got very different animals living there. So my first question is why? Why are there those differences? Is it by accident or is it driven by a particular process? And to understand what's driving it, you need to understand other things about the environment. We can describe what's there, we can describe how things look, but it's the function that's so critical to understand and that's where we, we really have a long, long way to go. The problem is lack of coordination, I would say, internationally. It's expensive work to do. So standardizing the way we sample the ocean is really critical because if uh, working in one area we use a different set of techniques than working elsewhere, uh, then that means we can't compare those areas very effectively. And so there'll always be that question, well, they differ because of the methods you used, as opposed to they truly differ. So many different countries are doing things in different ways. When you come to trying to put the data together to really get at biodiversity patterns and trends, you can't do so because of the data limitations. world experts in the biology of sea mounts, world experts in marine chemistry, experts in uh, ocean physics, the way currents flow and so on. And everyone astoundingly pretty much agreed on how to do the various operations in order to put together a multidisciplinary picture of the current state of the ocean at any one place we choose to go to. I think the oceanographic community in many disciplines recognizes the need for standard approaches. Uh, biologists, uh, I would say, generally recognize it, but uh, we haven't necessarily acted upon it. From a scientific viewpoint, and also to improve uh, regional management, there's a very strong incentive to, to get the best possible data, the best understanding of patterns and processes in the, in the deep sea. It is ambitious, but it is the largest habitat on the planet, and we've not even scratched the surface for this. So, and, and also the exploration, like it's our planet. We should know what happens at the bottom of it, and what lives there, and how it exists. The next steps are that we actually put together those protocols in the form of a report. That will be circulated amongst the scientists who attended the workshop, but also the broader community of scientists and then it will be published and we hope adopted by the global deep ocean science community. If the Nikton protocols are developed further, they can be uh, used by, by other agencies as sort of a, a best practice, so that when we are collecting data from different ocean basins, different times and different years ahead, uh, we can still compare the data sets, we can combine them and get a lot more power out of the analyses that, uh, that we undertake. The ocean's changing, both human influences and, and natural climate change. So as, as, a, as a scientist working in this area, there's an immediate application of the, of the information that we're, we're gathering and that's really exciting to have useful science as well as uh, exciting, interesting science. <laughs>